Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Nigel's Modeling Bench. We've got part two now of the um, the Spitfire build. And before we carry on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a like. Um, and also hit that notifications bell. Um, so where are we? Let's do a recap. One thing I have done off camera, I've put these, these bulkheads in the fuselage. What I've done is glued them in one side at a time and then quickly got the other half of the fuselage, clamped it all together, lined them up and then um, left it overnight to dry. So these are all in the nice and solid now. Um, I've also done the photo etched seat belts, which I should have really filmed for you guys, I'm sorry. But um, you see they look, they look quite nice actually for kit belts. I showed you how I annealed them. Um, I've given them a, a I've bent them into shape basically, glued these little tassels on the top here, these little two little tails. Um, and then basically put them in there, push them in my finger because they're a nail to just stay there, they don't spring back. Take them out, put them in some tweezers. They've had a coat of uh, a Ravel stone colour and then all the silver bits have been, the buckles that have been picked out with um, with a silver Ravel paint which go down, goes on like a dream. And then um, basically given them an oil wash then with a, just a plain brown oil just to just to give them a bit of you know sort of 3D effect. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how they've come out. You know, with a closed canopy, they're going to look great. Um, they're certainly not up to the standard of what you'd want, you know, HGW or something, or what you'd want in an expensive kit. But uh, you know, they they do the job. And as you can see, the cockpit, in, as inaccurate it is as it is, it looks fine. You know, the instrument panel looks okay. You've got the glassy dials in there, and the seat's got that red colour to it, and it's about ten times wider than it should be. But um, yeah, overall it's um it's coming together so um let's have a look at the instructions just to check where we are so we've done all this um the seat belts all thread together like this as, as, as i said uh this is all done i haven't put the machine gun sight in yet that's built but not in there i'm afraid i'll knock it off so that'll go in just before the canopy goes on um Got the engine built up here. This is all done. If you remember, I left some of the ancillaries off. No point in putting that in because not going to be seen. Undercarriage legs I haven't done yet. I've painted them, um, and I'll sort of you know get them together now when I when I need them. Um, these panels on top of the wings have been done, and I've done some sanding to sort of blend them out. I'm going to put some primer on there now to see how they look, and then when I'm happy, I'll just glue the wings together. Done my usual trick of my large flat sanding board and gently going over the surface of the wings and making sure all the edges are feathered out. If you want to know more about that, watch the um, my uh, little Lancaster build video part one. I show you in there about how I make sure that the wings are all feathered out so you get a good sharp trading edge. A lot of kits these days, they tend to have a sort of raised lump around the inside. So when you pinch it together, you're sort of doing this and what you want to be doing is, is, is getting it together nice and flat so they're all done now and, and ready to go uh, machine guns are in um, left all the uh, ammos and ammo car cartridges and all that out um, no point in putting any of that in and these outer machine guns um, my recommendation is cut half of the machine gun body off uh, to allow the wing to close down properly um, <clears throat> And then putting the wings together, I've got to assemble the uh, the ailerons and the flaps. This is all done. And um, one thing I did forget to say, because this just sits on two little pins, this radio, I put this um, support in just to sort of hold it in place so it doesn't get, you know, if you drop the fuselage once it's assembled, it's likely to just break off and rattle around in there. So um, I put that little support in just to hold it. Uh, so that's all done. Then we've done the tail wheel. That's in there in this side. You can see the tail wheel there. It says about painting it green in there. I haven't bothered because you can't see any of it anyway. Um, fuel tank is built up, but I probably won't bother putting it in. Now we've got to come on to these um, stabilizers and tail planes, and these need to be riveted. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to go on and put the engine cowl exhaust on and everything. And then we're going to be fitting the fuselage to the wings. I will probably do the fuselage to the wings before I do this. Actually, no, I'll do this while it's still off because if it doesn't need any sanding and blending, it'll be easier without the wings on there, won't it? Um, and then we're nearly finished. So uh, in this part, the intention is to get the whole thing built, finished and um, ready for paint, maybe even primed as well. So um, 
with no further ado I'll get on and get these uh, upper surfaces of these wings primed up and then we'll go from there right so they're primed now um, I say primed I tend not to use dedicated modeling primers um, they weren't around a few years ago and I don't think they're really necessary if I was priming a large area and I was a bit worried about adhesion I would probably use one of these Alclad microfiller primers um, this stuff here I don't know how I haven't thrown it in the bin yet it's absolute garbage um, acrylic urethane grey primer yeah wonderful in situations like this if I'd sprayed this with this stuff um, and then came along with a sanding stick like this and tried to sand it down it would just peel off um, like a like a layer of PVA absolute garbage why I've kept it I do not know I bought it when it first came out which was I don't know if there's a date on here um, there's E0804 so I'm assuming that's April 08 um, I bought this and or it was made in April 08 I'm guessing uh, so it's what is it now 11 years old and you can see if I stand the bottle up there's still that much left in there it's absolute garbage unless you're priming something like an engine block say that you're not going to rub down then fine but then it's quite temperamental and boggy through the through the airbrush if you must buy um a dedicated primer an acrylic primer probably the best one to go for is the ump primer you get the black white grays greens and all the different colors um but ump primer is basically Steiner res which is the same as the AK one shot. So um yeah, they're all sort of the same thing. They're all Badger Steiner res, just marketed under different names. Um but anyway, yeah, so I I've used uh, I've used Tamiya XF to 67 purely because I've got about three or four bottles of it. Um and I mix it with um about 50-50 with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, and that gives it a kind of bit of a bite into the plastic then. And then I mean this has been on for about five minutes, and I can, you know, you can rub at it for the standing stick whatever and it won't peel off and you know it's 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 wonderful stuff so um i tend to use this rather than dedicated primers anyway back to the subject we've got some issues with the fit particularly in this area here where this um teardrop cover meets this side cover here so gonna have to do quite a bit of remedial work to get a decent fit in there as you can see there's a a, a riveted flange but I'm assuming that riveted flange won't be on the cover. So I've got to try and sort of sand this down without destroying the detail on the rest of the wing. I may even see if I can pop it off and, and thin it down and, and refit it. Um, around the areas here where it needs some work, you can see a, there's a big gap there and there's a big gap there. All I'm going to do is I take my trusty Mr. Surfacer 1000 and I'll work from the panel out because I don't want to get too much in the rivets. Um, doesn't matter if the odd drop goes in because uh, basically it's going to be removed with a um, with uh, alcohol and a sanding stick, uh, a sanding stick, and a cotton bud. So you, I'm not going to be doing any sanding on this as such. It's certainly not to remove this anyway. So I'm just going to quickly brush that, and you'll see that straight away it's attacking the the um, the green paint beneath it that's fine it doesn't matter it's all blending in we're not after a decent finish here or a decent color finish we're just after a uh, we're just after its filling properties so I can rub push that into there there just go down that gap like so if you don't have any Mr. Surfacer I really would suggest getting some it's um it's so good it's for stuff like this as a general primer I mean you can thin it down and, and spray it I'll be doing that on my um, on my Lancaster because I'm gonna be adding rivets to the floor and the HCW rivets basically say they're the ones you put on before you paint and they basically state in their instructions that you um, you should prime it with uh, Mr. Surfacer before you uh, put the decals on and then of course you peel the backing off and it just leaves a, a, a slight witness of a raised rivet and um yeah it should look quite good 
Um, I don't know if I'd be I could be tempted to use them all over an aircraft. I've also got the archers rivets, which I've got loads of, and I've never used. Um, they're quite good for helicopters and stuff, or uh, or World War Two aircraft where the rivets were quite pronounced. So I didn't worry too much about these outer panels because they're going to get covered with a a great big roundel. So there'll be a decal on there which will do the, the gap filling for me if you like, if that's how you want to think about it. Um, and also have to remember this is supposed to be a fun build, I'm not after mega accuracy. So I'm not going to put anything here because I'm going to go and work on that now, they're both the same. So um, I'll get and uh, have a look at them and then I'll be back in a sec. Okay, they're done. Um, <clears throat> so I've got the Mr. Surfacer in the gaps. Uh, I couldn't pop those out. I, I felt that if I did, I was going to make even more work. So all I'll do is I'll get in there with the sanding stick and get them as blended in as good as I can. Uh, if I have to do any riveting work, I will. Um, I don't think I will, though. Um, and there we go. Uh, one other thing I intend to do is with this kit, you get some spare decals. So we've got the spare tail flashes here, which are the rivers I don't use. I can't remember which I'm going to do now. Um, so what I'll probably do is cut some, cut them up and make some red squares out of them. Put them over here where the machine guns go and then punch them through. Because basically in real life, this would have been red tape over these. And then the as the gun fired, it would go through the tape. Um, a lot of people say it was just there to uh, show that the gun was actually working. Um, I also think it had a sort of protective uh, element as well to it. So when the gun wasn't used, it sort of sealed it in the wing and everything. And if the weather was particularly bad, it didn't have, you know, muck and water and God knows what going down inside it. So, so basically, yeah, that's what it was. So I'm going to make those and put those on as decals after it's done. Um, but now that they're, they're drying, I can't really do much else with them. So let's have a look at what else we can do. And... Basically, we can start looking at the fuselage, and this is all done, so I don't need to do anything with that. And we've got the interior glued in there, so I need to look at getting this engine in, and then get the fuselage halves together. So we've got the tail wheel in on the other side. Um, the fuel tank is here. I mean, I could put it in just for the sake of having it in there, um, and then this. This literally slots in in that gap. I'm not sure if it's pegged. Yes, it is. No, it's not. There's no sort of peg mechanism in there, so it could go anywhere. And unfortunately, you have to put it in because um, because you need it for something to make the exhaust to. So I'm going to hold that in place like that, and I'm going to get some of this quick setting extra thin. Just. Put that in, let it capillary round. There we go, that's in like that now. And then just to check, I'm going to put this half up against it. And make sure that everything fits before that glue goes off. Yeah, fits the bit. I must say this kit, the, the fit of the... Um, Basically, of everything is really, really nice. I mean, the fuselage goes together. Look at that; it's, it's lovely, really, really nice. It's just a shame about the um, the Russian tank engine they've put in here, and the uh, the shape of the fuselage. If you look there, the contour is all wrong. But um, as long as you don't actually look at it like that, I don't think it really sticks out like a sore thumb too bad. But as I say, it's a fun build, um, and it's a brown and green Spitfire, and that's what I wanted. Uh, fuel tank is going to go in like that. It's funny they actually represent the uh, filler and the rivets, and yet you can't even see it. So <laughs> something um, a lot of the earlier Hobby Boss trumpeter kits did, wouldn't like all the jets with all the fully detailed engines, and then you close the uh, fuselage up around them. So that's in there like that. Again, before the glue goes off, just off of the fuselage halves. If you're fairly new to modelling, whenever you do stuff like this, it's always worth just every time you put something in, put the fuselage together, close it up, make sure it still all fits. 
um, that way you don't come to the end and think, oh no, you know, why isn't it going together? If I'd put the instrument panel in and it didn't fit, I'd have known it was the instrument panel that was stopping it fitting, rather than guessing at the end it might have been the instrument panel. So that is basically now pretty much ready to go together. Um, if you notice, I haven't removed the sprue nibs. I don't ever bother doing that until I've uh, until I've got everything done. And I know that here, you can hear that click. I've got an issue with the the bulkhead for the tail wheel. I think it's my fault. I think it pro I probably moved it after I put it in, and I don't know which way it needs to go. So, but I know I can click it in. So if I do that and then glue it and peg it, it will be fine. So. Just having a quick look round, a final check. Everything is in. I can get glue to everything from the inside. So let's get some clamps, some pegs, rubber bands. Let's get some rubber bands. These rubber bands here, they, they come in a pack, these fancy coloured things. They come from Asda and they're like a pound for a bag of about a thousand. They're absolute rubbish. So don't bother. Not Asda, Tesco, sorry. They're absolute rubbish. So if I hear that, when I click that together, it just clicks. So if I start at that end, what I'm going to do is just tack it. In fact, I'm going to have a look at this and see what's actually going on here. I think what I'll do is remove some of this here. And that should make life a bit easier for it to go in. That solved it. Right. I know. Still got that clicking. What I'm going to do is just peg the fuselage together. Um, so what I'm doing here is just putting some glue down the back, down the tail. Because this part here will, to all intents and purposes, become practically invisible. I want to make sure I've got some glue in there. If you look over on Brett's channel, High, High Altitude Scale Modelling, you'll see he's just done a review of a new glue from um, Mr. Hobby. And it's called SPB and it's got it's got black dye in it. So because it's black, that peg's not strong enough. Because it's black, it shows where the glue's been gonna to have to do it shows where the glue's been so you can make sure that you've got um, you know got glue everywhere you need it I'm gonna put a peg on there I'm not gluing this yet I'm gonna let the back this tail section go off before I um before I add any more glue it really doesn't want to go together here um, so let's put some in here and let it capillary round. Put another close pick on there. And if you remember, like I said, if you're doing something like this, clamp it first, put the glue in. Uh, if you clamp it afterwards, you end up with the glue oozing out everywhere. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the um, this new glue, it's got a black dye in it. So I thought I'd have a go at sort of copying it. So I put a few drops of Tamiya black paint, black acrylic paint in this um, extra thin. And uh, I've now got a black glue. If you can see that. But um, when you actually brush it on, it leaves a black stain. So I don't know if that's the same thing or not. So well, we'll give that a go later on with this. Um, so that's the tail clamp together. So 
So I'm going to leave that to go off now. I want that to be absolutely solid before I start pulling the rest of the fuselage about because other than that little area around there, the rest of it fits beautifully. So deal with the problems first and then uh, sort the rest out later. Right, so we're darting around a bit here. Um, so I've got the wings now there with the uh, Mr. Servicer drying. I've got the fuselage clamped together on the back end with that drying. Um, I've brought you in a bit closer because I want to um, show you how I'm going to get around this riveting. So basically this is the undersurface of the tailplane as it comes in the kit and this is the upper surface. And you can see what they've done, they've got the bottom as an aluminium rib construction with riveting and the upper surface is fabric covered. Yeah, don't ask me why. Um, so what we need to do is get rid of this fabric um, covering here and, uh, and basically make it look more like this one. So what I've done, I've done one here, you can see there it's all riveted and everything. Um, and basically I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, if you want me to do a complete video on riveting, I can. I've got a few tools and bits and pieces, but I must be honest, it's not something I've spent much of my life doing. Um, so I'm no expert at all. In fact, I'm no expert at anything. I'm just an average guy, but um, yeah. Um, this is how I'm doing it. If you've got another way, feel free to comment, but please don't knock the way I do it because what I'm doing works. Um, so basically what we've got is, is this um, this fabric covering. We want to get rid of that first. And you can see we've got a line round here, which is common to both the riveted and the fabric covered parts. So we've got a line to mark the, the uh, leading edge. And because we're going to be doing some sanding, I'm just going to deepen that line. So I'm going to take my Alpha P cutter or Tamiya scriber and just run along that line and just deepen it. The reason I'm doing this will all become clear. It's a bit of assurance. I don't want to lose that line because uh, rescribing that parallel to the leading edge with nothing to go from would, uh, would not be easy. So first things first, I'm going to go over this with a pencil. Um, could use a magic marker. In fact, yes, I will. I'll use a magic marker. So, okay, in areas like this, but be careful when you're doing other stuff. You must remember that if you use magic marker on a model, it will come through the paint however many coats you put on and then I've got a fairly hard sanding stick uh, it's, about, it's about a thousand grit and I'm just going to gently rub over the raised detail and get rid of those ribs and I'm just gently rubbing applying a little bit of pressure um, if you guys notice my nails are coming on they're actually starting to grow um, that uh, stuff you paint on them it tastes disgusting I'm glad to say the last time I tried it, I actually liked the taste of it so um yeah this is I've got some stuff from boots and it's disgusting the only trouble is if you're eating a sandwich or something you can taste it on the sandwich so yeah nice anyway um I'm just rubbing away here to get rid of the uh, to get rid of the ribs the rib detail and um basically get a perfectly flat surface okay so that's that done just run around that line again Right, so that's all nice and flat now. Flattish. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. I mean, aluminium skins on aircraft aren't perfectly flat anyway. And then what I'm going to do is find the, the mating part. So it's this one. So I'm going to get a piece of tape. I'm just using the cheap masking tape. There's no point in using your good stuff for this. And then tape those two together back to back like that. And when you actually look at a plan of the aircraft, you can see that the tailplanes are 
square where the elevators join it's square to the um you know it's a straight line it's just not an angle so you can put these back to back and then just copy the the lines across so with my scribing template i'm just going to draw some lines on here another one there if you notice some of these don't go all the way across that one does that one there doesn't go all the way across that one just goes from the front back This one goes all the way across, and that one does. And that one does. Getting these lines nice and parallel here will help you get a, a better job at the end of the day. My scribing template is sticking to the tape. Sound of silence, eh? And then that one there doesn't go all the way across. We've got one in between them, it doesn't go all the way across. And then we've got one here. Okay, so that's that. Now from the back edge is ten and a half and twelve and a half millimeters. So remember, this doesn't need to be perfect dimensionally, um, especially not on this sort of model. Uh, as I say, this is a fun build, and it's the model's got an accuracy. So I'm not going for the uh, absolute ultimate in accuracy. So we've got a straight line there. And then this one here is parallel to that, but only goes up to here. And then tapers off. Like that, there we go. So that's it marked out. Now I'm concerned here because I've got these lines here that look out. So I'm going to erase those lines and replace those. And that's part of the reason for marking it out first with a pencil. If you did this straight off with the rivet, if I just went straight now with the riveter, it'd be too late. I'd be here now with super glue filling the holes in and that's better. Okay, so we've got lines that go all the way across, and we've got lines that only go up to this here. So we've got this one here, and this one here, which are in the middle. Now, I don't want to go all the way across here, because this, is, this area in between is clear, and those lines there aren't parallel. So I'm just going to adjust that line out, and then I'll see that when I scribe it. Um, in fact, that didn't come out at all, did it? It's quite good doing things like this live because it, you get to see the mistakes and you realise that, you know, because a lot of these videos are so edited, you don't see anybody make any mistakes and you must, you know, some of you guys must wonder how, how the hell you ever get on every day with all the mistakes you make. Well, everybody makes those mistakes. So now what I need to do is get these apart and start doing my riveting. I'm going to keep this one here as a as a pattern. It's basically all I'm doing is copying onto the bottom what I've got on the top. So whether that's correct or not, I do not know. Now I'm going to use this rivetar from RB Productions. Um, you get a number of wheels with it, and I'm using the 0.75. All I've done is you take the wheel. I've taken the wheel and gone up to the existing riveting, and notice that it's the same pitch. These are 0.75 apart. So just to keep it looking even, what I'm doing is using the same pitch. Now, we can see on here, this line here goes right across and the line above it. If we can get it in the light, 
this line here goes right across the line above it goes across and then kicks off at the end so I'm going to put those two in first and also we got a line across the back here and up there so I'm going to put these two in first so I want that one there so what I'm going to do is put the wheel on and then slowly just roll the wheel whoops up the edge of the scriber without removing it you can go over twice if you lift it up you can't go back again unless you can pick up the holes and then I'm going to come with this one keeping it parallel like this and I'm going to come back to about here back to about here and then like that yep and now we've got that line in there as well which you can hardly see because of the heavy pencil line but it is there and then I'm going to come over to this one on the angle go over to there and that's that one in right so now I need to put this line across the back edge so I'm just going to hold my scribing template parallel to the back edge about a millimeter in and then like so and then a little bit down here and there's those in right so now as I said we don't want to go over that center line we want to leave that clear so I'm going to put two layers of masking tape up onto that riveted line there and now what I can do is get my scribing template hold it there and I can do this riveting here and the, I'm not pushing that hard that it's going to go through the tape so what it's doing is it's stopping the tape is stopping me marking it's stopping me marking the black bit that I want left blank there's another line there And what I would suggest if this is your, if it's your first time, get an old model, get an old scrap wing panel or something and practice on that first. Um, you know, if this was, if I was say I've got a flow model, um, a Rado 234, if I was riveting that, I can assure you I would be being extra careful and I probably wouldn't be using a riveting wheel either. Okay, so that's that done. So all those are done and all in. So I can take this tape off now, turn it around, put it on this side. Like so. And I can kick that away there. Now I can go in again, start at this end, I'm trying to stay away from the leading edge, as I'll show you in a minute, if I do actually manage to touch the leading edge then we could just sand that away, which is part of the reason for um, for making sure that line is scribed to a decent depth. I haven't gouged it out, I've just sort of probably taken it another quarter as deep again. And then that little tiny bit on the end. And that's as simple as that. And then what I can do is get my sanding stick, got the fine side here, go over it, remove the pencil. And you'll see then that the riveting is in there and what you've got is basically fairly faint riveting much like a, a Tamiya kit rather than the, the heavy sort of riveting you get on Hobby Boss or Trumpeter. I don't know if you can see the rivet in there, there you go. 
Okay, so now you can see how it's done. Um, you need to take more care than I did. You know, I'm doing it on camera. I, I wouldn't normally have it as far away from me as it is. Um, but basically, you know, this is a, like I keep saying, it's a fun build. I'm not after all, ultimate accuracy. I'm just after getting the thing built and making it better than, than it was. So there we go. And we can see that the riveting isn't as heavy as as it is on the uh, on the hobby boss panel, but it's there. Okay. Still darting about here with uh, different bits and pieces. So I've got the tail planes glued together and the uh, and the riveting all done as you saw. Um, got the rudder glued together there. That's waiting to be sanded. Got the elevators there. They're glued together. They fit onto the tail planes like so. And they'll be lovely once their joints are all sanded. Um, the ailerons there, they're done. So they're all uh, nicely sanded, or waiting, waiting to be sanded on the joints. Bit thick on the back edge. Um, I guess I should have really taken a bit more off them, but I think what I'll do is just put some Mr. Surfacer in there and, uh, and polish that up. Uh, here's the flaps. They're all... Um, removed and cleaned up they're going to be glued shut so I'm not going to worry about removing those ejector pin marks on the inside I'm not quite sure what the detail should be in there if you were building this model and wanted to have them down but I certainly know there wouldn't be ejector pin marks um, so moving on to the propeller now we're tarting around like crazy um, I've cut all the parts off as you can see here I haven't got this part because they, they've sort of messed up here really that, that part there is part of the actual fuselage and that will be glued onto the front of the frame here that is a, in real life that's an aluminium disc that sort of goes behind the spinner and keeps all the front of the um, engine framing all together um, so that shouldn't really be part of this so uh, yeah my intention is to build up the propeller now um, on camera for you something that is very nice is the way that the hobby boss actually did this a lot of uh, manufacturers these days they put a sprue point here either side uh, and then you end up having to clean up a um, a sprue nib on the on the leading and training edge of the blade well what hobby boss did they just had it literally one on the bottom which was really nice if you look back at my review of this kit i think i commented commented on it then um so here's the back end of the hub and i've just noticed it's got some flash in it there so uh i'll get my quick setting extra thin for this so basically the blades are just going to pop in like so one there in fact i don't think they need to be glued because when i glue the hubs together so i think what i'll do is put this together like that and then i can eke that apart to put that one in and then eke that apart to put that one in yeah there we go look so that's the way to do it um, and then I can just put some glue down in the joints and that will glue the blades in and glue the hub together now this will never be exposed so I'm not worried about it being the the neatest tidiest job in the world but what I do want to do is if, see if you can see the if you can see down through the spinner into them I want to paint this um, separately if you can't then I'll just paint it all black as it is so um, make sure we've got equal pitch on the prop blades because there is a little bit of play in them so there we go I think that's about even Yeah, I'm happy with that. Looks a little small to me, to be honest. So that's going to go on the front of there. You've got, hey, Spitfire. So, uh, yeah, lovely. Um, and then this actually glues on to the front of here. Oh, I see. So basically that, um, that pin there can be glued. So that will go on there like that and then that will go on there so you would actually 
glue this to the pin and then the propeller would spin behind it I'm assuming but um, I've left it so that the actual pin on the front spins and it's all a bit floppy it's a bit crap to be honest um, nothing fits very tightly at all that doesn't fit tightly on the pin the pin doesn't fit tightly in the engine this doesn't fit tightly on the pin um, what I may do is put some masking tape around it or something um, so that would then go onto the back plate like so and then the spinner will go over the front like so and yes you can see down into there so I think what I'll have to do is paint that separate and then paint the spinner separate that will go on the front like that and there we have our Spitfire with its offset engine it's, off, it's not an offset engine it's an offset fuselage so there we go that's our Spitfire so the first time we've seen it actually looking like a Spitfire and doesn't it look lovely I do like the older ones with the shorter nose I think the Mark 9 looks a bit out of proportion but just my opinion um, so there we go that's all that's all that done I need to do some work around see what I'm going to do about that now but um there we go just to back up what I was saying earlier um this this part is definitely glued to the engine you've, you've even got a, a peg on here on the on the nose and then you've got a slot in the back of the part there for it to go into so basically that goes on like so and then you've got two pegs either side so I'm going to hold the shaft in the middle keep the pressure on and then put some uh, quit setting cement around it that will then hold it all in place like so we can see that we've got plenty of movement there so we can make sure the cowling or the engine covers whatever you want to call them all fit okay so there we go I'm just going to check. I've got this lower part here. Yeah, that fits beautifully on there. Look, so that's a really nice fit at the front. So, um, yeah, it looks like we're on to a winner here. Still got loads of play in that uh, spindle. I'm kind of tempted to glue that spindle in and do some work on this to make it. Um, rotate perhaps draw this out and put a an insert in I don't know I'll do what I need to do and I'll come back a quick note on the one of the parts of the wing design here guys um, they only give you the landing lights in the extended position they don't give you any panels to have them closed so basically what you get is this clear clear part here which um, then has a light to go inside it and then you put this into that recess like so and then that's what you see well I don't want that I want them up um, so I've made these doors that go in like so and then that that will actually um, that looks much better than, than having these these things down uh, I'm not even sure if they're accurate I can't find any pictures online of them down um, the other thing I was wondering is if maybe selecting lower in the undercarriage actually meant them coming down all the time so um, that isn't the case the only thing is this plastic card's a little thick so um yeah that isn't the case so i'm actually just making these doors i'm just going to thin them down a bit on the edges where they meet the um where they sit on the flanges in the wing just to make them sit a bit more flush and then um and then obviously once they're in and glued in i can sand them back a bit then to get them perfectly flush but uh yeah it's just something worth bearing in mind if you're getting this kit best if you don't want the landing lights coming down which i can't think anybody would i don't know why they would um perhaps think about um you know making sure you've got some plastic card around this is uh 0.75 i'm using here so 
they're glued in there nice and solid they're not going to fall out <laughs> and uh, just give a little nudge in and then and there we go that's those done so that's another little bit done there's some more parts there for the spares box so uh, I can also put the lights in the spares box as well the spinner um, I had to rub down a seam on the middle of there there's a mold seam on the middle of the uh, upper cowling which has to go and that fits perfectly this I've glued the um, this front panel on onto the nose and I've glued the uh, the the shaft the propeller shaft on put some tape around it to get a nice fit um, so now basically what we get is that goes on like that the prop goes on nicely and sits in those gaps like that and then this hub piece goes on and that will glue on nice and tight and then that goes on and it, it's not all floppy anymore and you can still turn the propeller then so um, I'm happy with that and I think it looks great and also this belly panel underneath as I said earlier it fits absolutely perfectly um, the panel fit on these panels I haven't tried the side ones yet but the the top and the bottom they fit absolutely beautifully so uh, yeah well done hobby boss really good job there right now this little snippet here that's just begun like now is 24 hours since the last little snippet that you saw so a split second for you and um basically uh what what is it 24 hours for me so um where are we these gun access panels have been a complete and utter pain in the ass um they they're made of clear parts as you as you know from when you saw me fit them um they don't fit at all well they're too thick they're misshapen um the, their width varies the the actual interface of this teardrop bit here is is ridiculous and i have spent as long as much time actually getting these panels sanded and scribed and everything and re riveted to fit i spent as much time doing that as i did building this and you can see now the fuselage is assembled um, I've painted around the engine black quite why it came out gloss. I don't know. I need to go over it again with Matt uh, Probably I didn't stir the, stir the paint enough or something, but um, bit, bit unusual that one A um, little bit of Mr. Surfacer in the uh, seam here the top is basically nylon perfect except for that little bit there very very good fit on this kit overall except for this um, There's two pieces of advice. I'd like to give you to end up with a nice nice spitfire around this area number one is paint the clear parts before you fit them and get them to fit before you before you actually glue them in um, I thought they were okay you know the rest of the kit was going together really well um, but no absolutely awful absolutely awful so uh, yeah and the you know, second piece of advice is buy the Revell kit instead um, and then these these landing light panels they're in now and all um filled and smooth and, and rubbed back in and everything so that's all okay um and as we know the prop is built and i've done all the rudder and everything and put mr surfacer in the seams on there so i've got to rub all that down and get that all fitted uh, i also need to look at these radiators underneath so i need to spray the inside of these in the uh, sky color and the area in the wing where they go as well in here um, I'll fit these little bits and pieces first that go in here and then um, basically I need to uh, spray inside there, spray inside there, paint the radiators then slot them in and then when I spray the underside of the of the, um, the whole plane then I'll um, then I'll shove some foam up there to, to mask off those radiators then so uh, I'll get on with that now and I'll be back in a second right about four hours later now and uh, bit further on um, got the radiators done so that's all done I'm assuming this is the water radiator um, so that's all done and I'm assuming this will be the oil cooler this little cylindrical thing so they just pop on like that and like that and as you can see in here try and get it so you can see it detail in there is very nice indeed um, which is 
you know, nice. And they've got the uh, the little, um, I don't know if that's an ethanol or something in there, or something that injects something onto the radiator to cool it. Um, but yeah, lovely. Um, all very nice. We've got the wheels and the tyres done. They're sprayed with um, Alclad, not Alclad, uh, Vallejo Chrome. Um, don't know if I'm very pleased with it or not. I've got the Vallejo aluminium and that doesn't dry. Uh, contacted Vallejo about it and they said oh, I should do. <laughs> well, thanks for that then. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got the um, tailplanes, rudder, elevators there. Got the flaps here, ailerons here. Bit of a strange design. Um, they've depicted the look of the longer bottom section than the upper section, but haven't given you the, the, the angled part in there. So you can't really position them and pose them positioned. You have to um, you have to have them in the uh, in the normal position because otherwise, if you try and pose them like that, you're gonna, that's what you're going to see. So that's no good. And obviously you can see the wings are glued together now. I've got to clean that seam up. And I'll be covering these guns up with a red decal, as I mentioned earlier, and then punching it through. Um, as I said before, these are all done. That was a bloody nightmare. And then something else I've got to look at. I'm not, I don't know what to do here. Um, I've test fitted the wings onto the fuselage. As you can see, you've got these legs here that hook up under the fuselage and are supposed to pull it all together. But... Um, this goes in with quite a little click actually it's quite nice the way it fits there you go it fits in there really nice uh, and then the front goes up there and the engine cover front engine cover fits beautifully just like that really really nice thank you hobby boss they've done a really good job there these cowlings fit perfectly um you know that that really is a great job they've done there um so yeah but then i've got this huge gap in here so what i don't know is whether if I put some dihedral in it and close the gap up, if that's correct, you know, with some tape while the glue dries, or do I stuff the gap? I don't know what dihedral this aircraft's supposed to have. Uh, I'm sure I'll get a million comments. I bet there's loads of people out there that know it off by heart. But then I suppose I shouldn't really fuss too much about accuracy because the fuselage is, is misshapen here anyway. Um, so there we go. Uh, so yeah, all the... the, the the um, prop and spinner isn't glued together yet, but it's there. So uh, we can see now that it's actually starting like a like a Spitfire, which is nice. And um, I think really that within the next hour, this will all be finished, and I'll be able to put this part two up. Oh, the exhausts are just placed in; they're not glued in yet. I'll take them out to paint them and then um, put them back in. And if someone can tell me in the comments, I've got these little plastic pipes here, and they go. In here on either side it's like a pipe that's coming out of the exhaust and going back into the engine cover I'm not sure what that's for I don't know if Albie Boss have got that wrong um, if someone could let me know in the comments what it is whether I should fill the holes or, or put them on or, or what I should do um, and then we've got to see how the canopy is gonna fit yet so that's uh, something else I shall have to do later but as I say hopefully you're gonna get this all um, I've polished up that Mr. Service on the back of theirs give it a nice finish and um, there we go, they fit in there, lovely. So uh, yeah, hopefully get all this um, finished up now and then uh, be back in a minute with a, um, with a finished build. Okay, so got the tail planes on now. Um, I've put some Mr. Surfacer around the, the joints here. I've done some around that side panel there as well. Um, and I'm going to show you a technique. If you're an experienced model, you'll know this already. If you're a newbie, you may not have heard of it or seen it. Um, if you've got like a, a, a like a join here on the fuselage, you use Mr. Surfacer to smooth it out, and then you 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 polish it with a sanding stick or whatever to get rid of it to get rid of the seam. Um, but if you actually just want to fill a gap like around these um, engine covers. But you want the line to remain, so you don't just want to sand it smooth. What you can do is this: you take um, a cotton bud. I'm using Tamiya X20A. You can use pretty much any uh, thinners or uh, alcohol or whatever. Some people use cellulose thinners and acetone. I tend not to do that. It's it's very aggressive and it will attack the plastic. Um, so all I do is just wet the end of the cotton bud and just rub it over the over the Mr. Surfacer like this 
and lo and behold what happens is the excess mist surface disappears and the but it stays in the gap so you end up with a, a sort of you know a, a joint which will take a wash and I can put some chipping around it and everything but I didn't want to sand it flush and the other thing is if you're working around detail like we've got all these um, Zeus fasteners around the edge of these panels I don't want to um, I don't want to get rid of that detail so you know there was a there was like a where the corner meets there there was a gap there was a gap here where the panel sort of dog legs and uh, yeah so rather than sand it just do this one unfortunate thing is cotton buds these days are made with um, paper tubes now rather than plastic so unfortunately for us as modelers the um, the thinner is just well it's just any wet I get I guess makes the the, <laughs> the the actual shaft of the thing goes soft so it's all floppy so uh, so yeah you, you can't sort of use it as a, a cotton bud anymore so um, I guess it's great for the environment and I'm all for that but uh, it just means that now us modelers have to hold it by the very end like that which makes filming a little bit more difficult for you but uh, never mind I also did it around the fuel filler you can see there there's some Mr. Surfacer in around there so um, yeah, it's, it's a good way to do things without actually sanding the joint at all so I'm just going to rub away here and also while I'm doing this I want to talk um, I'm wondering actually if I just try and just dip the end in rather than the whole thing maybe it'll last a bit longer um, right now I said in my first video of this one that what I was going to do was build this in two parts and then third part would be painting and weathering or perhaps third part would be painting and then fourth part would be weathering. Um, I need to break that promise because I have to ask some questions. Um, I've already alluded to the questions here before and then I thought well hang on a minute if I'm asking these questions in the video um, and I do it as a complete build in two parts by the yeah that works if you just dip the end of the cotton bud in it works um, what will happen is I've, I'll have built it before I get a chance for you guys to give me your suggestions because I know that you people out there watching this know a lot more about Spitfires than I do in fact if you know more than the fact that Spitfire has two wings then you know more than I do um, so my questions are when I fit the wings to the uh, fuselage I get a gap as I said before probably just a few seconds ago for me it was a couple of hours ago um, I get a gap so looking at it like this now let me try and see the angle we're getting put the right way up for you looking at this now should I take the ends of the wings up and add dihedral therefore closing up the gap like so Yes, yeah, so we'll have dihedral like like that. Yeah, or should I put plastic card in, fill the gap, and leave the dihedral as it is there? So, can you please tell me what you think I should do? Go for that or that? That. Let's try and do it from behind so you can see the wings. Should I do that or should I do that? Yeah, I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter because of the aircraft's inaccuracies anyway um, the other thing is I have these tubes these tubes here now they go in here just on this side where it's cleaned up this tube goes in here like so and goes into the back of the exhaust when the exhaust is in there it goes in here should I put those in or not uh, what was the other question I wanted to ask Oh, when the aircraft was on the ground, flaps up, ailerons are going to be parallel because of the way they are, as I showed you earlier. Um, would the rudder be dead straight or would it be slightly kinked? And would the elevators be down? I want to give it a bit of a, you know, a bit like when I build a model car. I like to do it with the wheels just steered. I don't like everything all square and straight. So um, if you could answer me that question, please. So 
what I'm doing is actually breaking my promise and there's going to be three parts of a build. But I can assure you that part three, or I might even call it part 2A actually, um, to, to sort of cover myself. Um, so I'm not a liar. Uh, so yeah, what I might do is call it part 2A and then that will be a very, very quick part and it will literally be fitting the canopy, masking it, gluing the wings on and basically finishing up the build. So um, yeah, if you could um, if you could tell me, please, I'd be interested to uh, to know because I, you know, I want to get it right. I, the last thing I want to do is glue it all together and somebody say, "Oh, you've done that wrong. You should have done it this way." Um, you know, so uh, yeah, if you could help me out there, guys, I'd be grateful. And that way, I'll get this loaded up tonight. Today is Thursday, the seventh of February. Um, so I've basically built this in, in a couple of days, really, three or four days. Like I said, I've spent as long doing these panels as I have building the complete fuse, the large cockpit and everything. So um, anyway, call that a wrap for this. That's part two done. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and tell your friends and get them to subscribe. I've got a bet on that I'll, um, I don't think I'll hit 2,000 by the end of the month, but some people say I will. So let's see. Um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, so like, subscribe. If you didn't like, dislike and tell me why and tell your friends and, uh, and that's that. So I'll see you all tomorrow, probably with this finished, the build finished. Um, actually it might be Saturday because I'm, over, I'm out all day tomorrow. So it might be Saturday. Um, I've also got here to my side, Monty's Humber, which I'm working on and putting together part eight on that one. And I've got this one here, which is just about ready to have its wings and everything fitted. So um, need to do some work on that one and show you how I go about blending the engines in. And then I'm going to be getting some more work done on the 32nd scale Lancaster. But I really, really need to get the A7 tank finished as well for you. So, um, yeah, I'm a busy boy. Um, and I thought not working was going to be easy. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. And now I'm waffling. Bye-bye.